Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of some Arduino work. We're going to add a ultrasonic sensor to the Arduino. An ultrasonic sensor looks just like this. You can buy them for $3.95 at SparkFun. This is not a sponsored video. I wish it was. Um, but they work just like uh, radar sensors where they pulse out a signal and then it comes back. So if you cover up one of those like stereo looking speaker things, it is not going to work. So you want to make sure that both of these are, are just like this. You can get some sensors or some numbers back, some distances back from two centimeters to about 400 centimeters. I usually just use like the area at our desk or our students' tables. And the one difference between this and you know, the one we're going to be using on Tinkercad is this has four prongs and the one on Tinkercad has three, but it's all really the same stuff. So here we go, let's jump right into it. Okay, so I grabbed an Arduino with a breadboard. You can, for this assignment, you can just grab an Arduino and a ultrasonic sensor. So it looks just like that to get this, this assignment done. But I'm gonna use the breadboard because in future assignments, we're gonna add some things like LEDs to it. So let's flip this and get started. Okay, so I'm not going to plug it directly into the Arduino because that would mean that these three lines or these three prongs would go right into the same signal and you just get all kinds of mixed up. So we're going to put this signal um, like right about like here 16 or 17 because we are going to pin out of seven. And then we're going to, this is your power. It says five volts right here. So I'm going to plug this down here into seven. I'm going to make it red so it's easy to label and less confusion for students. This one right here is going to go down and it says G and D, which stands for ground. And I'm going to label that one black. So we've got our black, we've got our ground, our power, and our um, signal going out. So if you ever, ever have a problem with any of your circuits and something's not working, check the power and ground. That's the very first spot to look. Okay, that's all the setup you really need. Now we got to jump into the code. So the code is uh, not that. We need to add a couple variables and we're gonna add one variable for centimeters. We're gonna call that CM for short. And we're gonna create another variable for inches and we're gonna actually type the word inches because well, it's not much different than the abbreviation for IN. Okay, let's start setting some, some code on here. So first we're going to set it to, and make sure it says to and not by. Okay, we don't wanna change anything. So we're gonna need both of those. One of them is going to be our inches and the other one is going to be our centimeters. And we're going to actually get a readout on both. So if you're in the United States and you only know inches, well, start learning some metric. But everybody else in the world uses metric. So we're going to give both. Here we go. We are going to jump into this input. And there's this really long one, this one right here. We're going to put that there. And I could drag that over and say, hey, I want pin seven to do that. Let's see, let's just alter the same as the trigger in units of centimeters. That is right, I believe. Okay, then let's jump into setting the inches to, we want some centimeters, we wanna do some math here. So 2.54, divided by, all right, or set inches to centimeters divided by 2.54 to give us some inches. I mean, set inches. There we go. I think I said it right. And let's start doing some printouts. So when we're doing printing, it doesn't literally like print it onto a piece of paper, but it'll print it on the screen. And right down here is the monitor. It's super cool. It has this on the Arduino software also, which is really, really helpful. Okay. 
we're going to get it to print inches without a new line. So it's going to say the number. And then we want to add another printout. And we want it to say inches. And we're going to com put a comma there with it so then we know which one's inches and which one's centimeters. Um, let's try and duplicate that and bring that here. We're going to want to trash that because we want centimeters without a new line. And we're going to change this to centimeters. So, and finally, we're going to wait. But we're going to wait like 0.1 seconds. All right. Um, I am going to slightly move that over and move this over a little bit. And so when I hit start simulation, you've got a green line here. Sensors are working. No errors. That's good. Now, when you click on this serial monitor here, you can see you've got some numbers and nothing's changing until you click on here. All right. So we're looking at 113 centimeters, and it says 113 centimeters here. We're looking at uh, 44 inches. It says 44 inches here. But when we drag this out, all of a sudden, the distance starts changing. Now, I'm going to move this, my face out of the way, and I'm going to hit there. And you can see that when I move this, it changes. So you've got a graph that changes, and you've also got a serial monitor that changes. So this is super cool. This is you know a great way to tell distance. We use this when measuring some distance in environmental science, like the rising of creeks. Uh, when water starts getting higher, we use this in prototypes for like car backup monitoring systems, whether it's a light or an alarm, there's all kinds of features you can use an ultrasonic sensor for that are very uh, inexpensive and also uh, just lots of fun and real world experience. So one of the last things I'm going to ask you to do is call this ultrasonic, then go ahead and throw your name on it with a little annotation. And if something that would help me out, if you have any questions, please comment below or in our Google Classroom and like, share, and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you soon.